Okay, sorry for the wait. I was trying to see if I could upload the video. Uh, as you saw in the last video, the quality was god awful with the recording, and at that point, I just got frustrated with it. So I'm just going to do the old method that I was using previously, which was pretty much just making sure that I keep the same settings as I had when I first did it. Just lowered the requirements on the uh, recording settings. Just seeing how it's running right now. It looks like it's fine. And here's where uh, the NPC sometimes like derps with pathing. Look at him run back and forth like an ass. And yes, this is basically the same mission as you did in Bone Claw, and you can do them in each one of them, which actually gives you quite a bit of experience for so little, but in this situation, I'm not going to go and do all that, we're just doing that for Zanesville. He's going to give me all the same missions, he's going to tell me to get copper and blah blah blah, but I already have scrap copper gathered so it doesn't matter, so that's going to complete that mission. So to make sure you have that extra copper when you come here. And notice how it also completed the second part of the mission for the cheap ammo because of the fact that I already had cheap ammunition from crafting earlier. So that completes that. Oh, and don't mind that. The tutorial thing keeps blinking for some reason. I think it's because of uh, when I was editing the videos before and I just got tired of dealing with it. So, that's going to bother me, but not as much as the audio and whatnot, not syncing previously. Okay, so see, we have another horse, we have more horse feed, and we don't even use this, so that's going to be sold when I find an NPC, which isn't very far away. Uh, the blue steel lock boxes you can keep them if you want. Honestly, I have no use for them. I only use the red and black lock boxes, and that's if I decide to get a key. But I don't like blue lock boxes, so I'm throwing mine away. You can try your luck with the blue and green lock boxes. I never like them. Alright, so we're going to return for our reward. And we are going to split this up into about four different videos. I'm going to try and make sure that these are set up as... basically around like 15 to 20 minute videos. Now I could be wrong on the time frame. I'm pretty much going to judge it based on how I did it the first time when the video is messed up. So that way, we pretty much keep the same amount of videos. But I'm going to make sure for a damn fact that we're going to have HD video this time rather than the 480, which is depressing. Alright. You might ask, why am I going to go back to get this stupid little garage mission. Well, it's 50 experience. It's not a whole lot, but meh. I had to go back there anyways to turn in the previous part of the mission. Reminds me I should uh, 
finish up with the cheap ammo. But I still have a few of these left, so I don't have to make the bandages just yet. And for the most part, you won't really need bandages unless you uh, stumble upon an NPC that can whoop your ass. And uh, in most scenarios in the uh, beginning zones, they're not very strong. Like, there's one over here that's the... What is it? The Gully Dog Lieutenant. And he has a little pistol. He actually hits pretty hard, about 14 a hit. So that tickles a bit. You're going to notice I'm still raising my int and my endurance. That's because this build is going to be a rifle crafter. And, well, I want to have my first aid high enough for what I need. Which, I'm not leveling it yet. It's going to wait a little bit. It's going to go to 36 because that will allow me to get staunch wounds too, which I'll show you in just a little bit when I have the AP too. Another rule of thumb when it comes to AP spending, do not spend more than you necessarily need into it. There is no benefit from overspending into a skill, mutation, line. Same goes with stats. There's a reason why experienced players call it min-maxing, which basically means that you're not wasting your ability points on useless crap. And somehow, okay, there we go. Oh, it's not supposed to be that color. That's probably why this is blinking. That's okay. Alright, so we're going to do the shooting range first once I pick up the ammunition from this guy. Not sure what that was about. I don't know if that's on the video or not. I just had like a white blink on the screen. Hopefully that does not happen again. Definitely have a lot more stamina on my horse this time around, probably because I didn't stop and show a bunch of things that didn't really matter at the time. Pretty much if you run straight to Zanesville from Boneclaw, you're going to be pretty well off on your stamina and everything else. And actually, before we exit, we're going to go ahead and grab some book and sell off the useless crap that I have in my inventory. Any stamina drinks that are this weak, it's not even worth keeping. You might as well just sell it. Any recipe books that you get extra of, go ahead and sell those. And then you want to go ahead and buy anything that you can get up to the maximum for armor craft. Because, well, this character is going to be a crafter. I might not craft that much right away. I'm going to try and at some point do a crafting guide, so I want to have these available to me. So either I will buy my equipment or I will actually craft some. Really depends on my mood. throw away this because it's the same thing as what we have. And you cannot trade it, you cannot sell it. I 
And you notice I am going to be carrying that uh, horse feed sack in my inventory for a while, just because of the fact that I have no other place to put it. Or at least I don't feel like putting it in this horse, because I am planning to delete this horse once it's uh, used up. I am going to get the air rifle schematics, because of the fact that I would like to have my uh, crafting skill for my air rifle. I do seem to be getting a little bit of connection lag, probably because of the damn server again. Uh, because of the last patch, we've had slight delays on certain items moving to and from inventory, so we need to avoid that situation. And also, the books that I grab, they're specifically for rifles, so... If you're a pistol crafter, you want to go through all crafting, make sure you buy all your books in the zone before leaving. They don't cost that much. And of course, here's another vendor, the Nature Facility. He's called the Trade Skill Vendor. Well, not Vendor, Trainer, sorry. And he's going to give you the Horse Feed Manual, which you will definitely want. Basic veterinary kit so you can uh, make the next horses. Animal training. And then, of course, Animal cr Training Kit. Because you don't get an Animal Training Kit normally. Which is under Nature. You'll notice we do not have one. It looks just like the basic veterinary kit, but you do not get one when you start out, so make sure you make one. That way you can upgrade your horse. Okay, and you'll notice the way that the map is spread out a little bit in terms of where the missions are. Which I might have some not tracked, I don't. So, we have one mission well, sorry, two, three missions to the south, but we're not doing the ones to the south. We're going to go to the north. There's a very good reason behind this. The reasoning behind this is, by the time you go south, you're still going to have to come north, and there is a lot of missions to do in the north end. So, try to avoid uh, going south if you can, because you're just going to end up having to come back over here anyways. And it'll save you time just going to the north end first. And you'll notice when I stunned that NPC how his head was uh, spinning around in a daze. Uh, you can miss headshots that way, which is where hitboxes come into play. It's the same effect for NPCs as it is players. Some NPC hitboxes are not correct. So... That's a little bit of an issue there. But you're just going to have to deal with it. And I am going to run to the east to pick up this one, because once I talk to him, he's going to send me back towards uh, the south end. I'm not going to do that one right away. I just want to pick it up. I don't seem to have any huge amount of stuttering like I did previously when I did the last recording. Not the last recording that I uploaded, but the one that was supposed to be this one. That was yesterday. So hopefully when I go through the video it's not going to have any issues there. And you may ask why I'm doing all these missions, because it opens up a series to be able to get the Zanesville air rifle, um, a few nice pieces of equipment. I want to be able to get one of the best groin slots, even though it's actually legs. I don't know why they picked groin as a uh, slot, but I mean, whatever floats their boat. Be able to get some boots, pants, shoulders. We're going to get another chest piece or back as it's called. So we're pretty much just going to boost our survivability entirely. And then of course, once we go towards Oilville, we're going to have a nice little quest there to give us a uh, face mask and also a hat. So all in all, you're going to be pretty decked out without actually having to craft much of anything. So that's going to be quite helpful. You notice I did skip some nature nodes back there. 
I'm definitely going to get nature nords, nah, nodes before I leave Zanesville. Because of the fact I'm going to need them high enough to be able to harvest the vegetables and the grain that I need when I go over to Oilville. But I definitely don't need to worry about it until I can make sure I get this to 45. At least in terms of getting grain. Which is the main reason you level up your intelligence, because it's based off of your int and your perception. Perception doesn't really do much of anything, so don't even worry about that early on. Int will be much more beneficial to your crafting, and you can't hit max crafting for a long while, so don't even worry about trying to push yourself to hit the max as soon as you hit that level. Just save your AP, make sure you hit it at 55, that's all that matters. Alright, so now we're going to go to the other north end that we wanted to go to. Still have a good amount of stamina on our horse. And I think I might jump over this. Yeah, we're going to jump over this. You also notice I am not trying to avoid the NPCs. It they're going to hit no matter what I do, so there's no point dodging attack. You can kite them, however, so you can like, run around, you can run faster than a melee NPC and be able to kite them. They will reset after a certain distance, and of course if they cannot reach you at all, they will reset, which I could show you really quick, but... I want to make sure I get most of this uh, mission done. And if I complete it in a fast enough time, I'll show you that. Otherwise, I'll just show you on another character. Okay, only that one average. That's right, I'm climbing houses on a horse. What up, bitches? Super elite parkour shit up in this bitch. Taking the horse in the house.
Oh, I didn't aggro the ones inside. That works for me. Oh yeah, you'll notice before I loot this one, there's a log attached to this NPC. I don't know what causes this bug, but uh, if a developer sees it, please fix that. It drives me insane. There's like wooden boards, logs, and whatnot. They just get attached to the NPC and they float around with them. I don't think it's intended, but who knows. That might actually be one of the reasons why we have so many issues with uh, FPS, is that there's probably those invisible... Uh, they're not really invisible. They kind of pop up after you attack them, so it's kind of strange. Just gonna get on the pony. There's no way to. Oh, wait, wonder if I can go up. Nope. I was hoping I could go off somewhere in there. I haven't gone in the second story of that building before. So. He wants us to go over here to rescue his buddy. We're probably going to have some NPCs following. You'll notice those NPCs, the torturers specifically, are very, very, very weak. So, uh, before you leave the zone, you could easily sit here and kill them. I'm pretty sure it's intended because it's supposed to be a uh, beginner quest, but I don't know. They might up, up the HP at some point, who knows. I think this is where it wants me to go in here, but I don't know if I can jump in there. Nah, it doesn't look like I can. I'm not even going to try. Yeah, I can't jump. Oh, wait. No, it's a hill over there. Way too far. Okay, so we're just going to go straight to there. Try and avoid as much aggro as we can, which is not a whole lot of options. There is that one NPC chasing us. granola bars or something. Get our HP regen up in case I get attacked by a bunch of crap. Uh, this mission, he's gonna be like, oh no, look out! Two of these guys are gonna attack you, so... You'll notice sometimes I'll go into uh, scope mode just so I can be able to shoot them whenever they're too close. Uh, Humanoids is a little annoying when you want to try and just get headshots when they get close. They go a little too close and it, your gun will go up and over them. Same with pistols. I'm not touching it. So try to avoid that situation if you can by using the scope. Or you can always press F9 to go into first person if you'd like. But I don't like playing in first person. It bothers me. At least in this game it just doesn't, it doesn't look pretty. We go and we're gonna jump on this mobile home onto the house avoiding aggro completely and we're gonna go back in the way that I came before it wants us to find this box right here so you hear some noise you pick up a major's helmet and this guy will give you some pantaloons which are very nice compared to your previous one you notice your resistor only 20%. And he's going to try and tell you about what happened and everything. But by equipping those, we jumped up to 34% resistor. That's always nice. 
And you'll notice we have a ton of missions to the south now. And that is the reason why we wanted to make sure to do everything to the north. I will be doing one more mission to the north, I believe. There might be two. Well, not directly related to the north. I do have to pick up one from the south where I have to kill the coyotes over here. Oh, can't go over that. And you'll notice my horse is running out of stamina, so I will have to kill Captain Derps. Again. I want to say this is the third time now. And then I'll revive Captain Derps Jr. Oh, and of course, since I leveled, I've got a bunch of extra missions in here. This is going to have me go to Oilville, so that's the only reason I'm picking that one up. And I'm going to be running there anyways at some point. Oh, damn. Almost did it twice. Good at this game. You're going to notice I don't go to the right to pick up that collection. That's a collection mission this guy has. I don't like that mission. It's only good the first turn in, so don't even waste your time for any of the other turn ins from him. It literally gets reduced to like a tenth of the original reward. So, save yourself the hassle. Just completely ignore it. You go kill those tortures if you want better XP. And he's going to have one for Oilville and Embry Crossroads. At some point we are going to Embry, so we're picking that one up as well, just for the XP. Oh, and I thought the banker would have a mission for us, but it's still gray, so we cannot do it just yet. Alright, you'll notice I do have a few more, but I can't go to all of them, obviously. Let's see, reap what I sow. Yeah, I have to go up to the north, so I am going to go to the north to at least do that part. And then everything else is pretty much to the south, other than one time that I have, well, two times that I have to go back north for uh, a timed killing mission, so. Once I kill these gully dogs and pick up this other objective that I need, I'll start the part two of the video. Oh, and when you're going down hills, you can't really do this on bikes and cars and whatnot, but you can do it on a horse. This way you won't take falling damage. Be very careful about that, because you could easily kill your horse, but thankfully, because you have training benevolence, you can also heal it with staunch wounds. Pretty much any heal you can heal your mount with, so you don't need veterinary kits for that reason. And it looks like Captain Derps is going to be out of stamina when I get back on. Not a whole lot. Most like what I'll do before I start the other video as well, just restart the client since there is a lot of memory leak with this game um, when you play it for prolonged periods. Since it does use a ton, ton of memory and CPU, especially when you're on higher graphics, which you would think, oh no, my graphics card can handle it. No, doesn't matter. You have crappy RAM or a CPU, you're going to get pwned. You'll notice I kind of shot through the head there like twice. That's what I meant before about uh, humanoid hitboxes being slightly in That time I completely missed that. That was very shameful. Remember, best PvP or NA. He'll die to the dot. Or 
bonus XP. Give him a goddamn water. Remember, keep the shoes, because you can sell them on the auction house. There's not many white shoes in this game. You'll notice whenever you complete a part of the mission, sometimes it doesn't track right away, so you want to make sure you uh, open up your quest window with J so you can retrack it. And now I take all this stuff to Vince, and he's going to give me some shoulder pieces. So again, more armor, more resist, more badassery. Go ahead and run over and turn this in, and I think I'll stop this part of the video, restart the client, and then uh, start another recording. Because I did leave this client on for like two hours while playing around with that uh, last recording. So hopefully this one doesn't have any issues. Oh no, Captain Derp's in walk mode. Well, Captain Derp, screw you, I'm going ham. Gonna use our dash ability. Get some little boost to move. Uh, because my weapon skill is only one, which is what the requirement is for this weapon, which is why I stated in the uh, Bone Claw video that you're not gonna be leveling your weapon at all. Weapon, sorry. Is because of the fact that you're not gonna have a weapon that you actually need to level it up for for a little bit of time believe the next tier is like 26 and then it goes to 30 but we'll go more into that when I actually require to get it which it's kind of confusing actually cuz you go from 1 to I believe 6 or 8 Actually, I could check that really quick while I'm running over to this NPC cuz we do have some makeshift weapon skills Yeah, you see where right here it's a level 1 weapon, but it requires melee 6. There's rifle 6 and pistol 6 ones, but then you also can go with the level 5, which jump up to 45. Uh, there is one before that. Yeah, 28. So yeah, 6, 28, and then it jumps to 45. Kind of strange. Just in my opinion, it's kind of strange. But that's just the way they wanted to do it, so whatever works for them. So we're going to go some badass shoulder pieces. These shoulders will last you for a long time. Shoulder pieces in this game sadly suck until around 25. Unless you don't care about the coordination. Which honestly isn't a big, big deal, but some characters might care. Alright, so you'll notice we have submissions to this. So, next video is going to be focusing on those. Alrighty, going to start uploading this and start the next video.